welcome to class. Let me just get this all set up. Um, if you are watching this via live stream, hello, welcome. Um, let me know where you're from, where you're watching from. If you are, um, if you're painting with someone, you know, in another state, let me know. Um, if you are watching the replay, um, you could still let me know. You could still let me know in the comments those things. I love to see where everybody's painting from. Um, but if you don't want to stick around for the live chat, I will be leaving timestamps in the description so you can just skip ahead real easily. Um, and yeah, welcome to class. I'm so excited. So this is kind of just the um, beginning chat where we get to kind of meet each other and I can go over any questions you may have. So make sure to um, let me know if you have any questions before class gets started. I will be going over all of the um, all of the supplies and everything um, when class starts at uh, about in a half an hour. Um, but I can definitely go over those now as well if you would like me to um but yeah um let me know where you're from how long you've been painting all sorts of stuff i would love to know hello jean you are from toronto well, hello we have a lot of canadians um i feel like people in canada just love painting and are always here um so welcome Welcome, welcome. Are you guys excited for Valentine's Day? Is Valentine's Day something that you celebrate in your family? Or is it something that is just kind of a holiday? Do people get work off from holiday from this holiday? Is it considered like a holiday? Like a paid holiday? Or do you get time off? I've never really worked like a traditional job. Like an office job or anything like that. So I, I don't know. I don't know these things. Tell me. Give me your knowledge. <laughs> Hi! I'm excited for this one too. I will say that some, some people might be intimidated by the roses. And if you are new, I would say stretch yourself. Be okay with it not coming out the way you think it's going to come out. It might come out better. It might come out, you know, not as you planned. But stretch yourself. It's okay to you know, not really have a plan going in. And this is, this is all a learning experience. But if you are really new and you're terrified of the roses and you're like, oh, I, I don't know if I want to do the roses, you don't have to do the roses. You can just do like a heart or something like that. That's really simple. Um, but I would suggest, you know, push yourself. Um, all right. We have Ontario in Australia painting since you were four wow that's awesome so you've been painting for 12 years that's like I think that's longer than I've been painting <laughs> if I'm like at all honest um Valentine's is a two for one birthday oh okay I have to ask do you like having Valentine's on your birthday maybe maybe not as a kid but maybe now it's fine just a regular day okay um your iowa vancouver welcome just started painting welcome is that pennsylvania pa pennsylvania i need to get better at my states <laughs> at least have like a a rewash what is that what am i trying to say like a not relearn them because i learned them at one point i mean i guess i could relearn them but you know when you're like not in school and you're not like studying a specific thing? It's just something you forget. But yeah, welcome. I'm really excited for this. So a lot of people get really... Um, like they don't, they don't know where to start when doing something like this. And if you wanted to use a traceable, like absolutely. There is nothing wrong with using traceables. Um, I didn't provide one for this because I really wanted to just be able to break this down into shapes where you could 
just honestly look at a picture and be like, I could do that, right? So you're looking at this picture and it looks complicated, but when you break it into shapes and and you put them all together, it's a lot easier than than you might think. Um, and actually, I used a sponge for this and I'm not seeing my sponge. So I may have to go get my sponge. Hey moderator, if you're listening, which is my husband, <laughs> I have a sponge in the kitchen if you want to go grab that for me. I can go get it, but if you hear me. Pennsylvania. Yeah, okay, cool. So, let's see. Stuff we are doing. Let's see. We are going to be using... I'm just going to get my paints out real quick. I'm going to be using um, black, yellow. I'll probably put these right here. I'm going to be using some red, obviously. If you wanted to pick different colors for your roses, that is totally fine. You could do that. Um, I left the other colors of the background, the little... Um, floor that he's sitting on as well as the actual color of the bear it's all very muted so that the pop of the roses really um, that the color really pops so you could do a purple or a pink like a bright pink or a blue that would also look really I went with the traditional red roses because it was more Valentine's -y. Um, but if you don't prefer um, red roses you could definitely choose something else and like I said before, if you're terrified of doing these roses, I'm really breaking it down into a very simple, um, more of an abstracty way. But if you wanted to just do a heart, that would also be fine. Um, so I have my, my black, my red, my yellow, my white. And then I'm also going to be using a brown. I think other than that... Um, if you have a green, you could use your green. If you do not have a green, then you could use, um, your blue and your yellow to make green. So that's totally up to you. If you have green, use it. Um, if you have, um, if you don't have green, just mix your blue and your yellow. Uh, let's see. I honestly started painting because of your Christmas tutorial on cards. Aw! And now my husband is making me making you an easel like actually like creating one like making you does he do like woodworking and stuff that's really cool yeah i've had this easel for i don't know probably like five or six years um i got it um when aaron brothers was a thing before they got absorbed into michael's they had this huge sale and everything was like half off um they had sales a lot but this i think that it was part of their going out sale um, and so I just got a ton of supplies and this, and I was about to start doing, uh, like classes anyway. So I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity to get a good easel. And this one actually stands up. So, which is really helpful. Um, thank you for doing these. You're welcome. I used your, I used your art tutorials for my counseling appointment. Oh, that's cool. How does, how does that work? Um, yes, it's really nice and made of Ikea shelf parts. <laughs> Repurposing. All right. That's awesome. That's really useful. Especially if you were going to get rid of that anyways. I, all right. I have a question for you. I have green. I don't have a lot of it. And I'm debating on whether or not to just make my own. Should I make my own? Uh, true story. The I usually put out a speed painting of like the process for when I originally created um, whatever it is we're painting the day of. I usually put that out the Wednesday before, but I lost the footage. I don't know if I just never clicked record, but I lost the footage. And usually that's where I'll... Like, I can go back to that speed painting and, like, go back to, like, the process and be like, what colors did I use or whatever in case I forgot. Um, but 
I can't do that with this one because it just like I searched my entire computer and anywhere where it might have been my hard drives I lost it so I never posted it because it disappeared I don't know I never found it so I, I apologize for anyone who was looking forward to watching that <laughs> I know some people like to watch it to like get a feel for the process, which is I you know it's really helpful for some people, which is one of the reasons why I do it. But um, hello from Langley, British Columbia. Hello. Uh, me and her just talk during the tutorial and helps me calm helps calm down people. Wait, where is this from? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. That's really cool. I'm glad that, you know, I could be of help to people. Even though I'm not there, I'm still glad that I could be helpful. I have heard a couple people will use my classes for like different like care homes and things like that, which is really cool. Honestly, I'm just glad to be here and just share art with people. And I think it's fun that, you know, everyone gets to use it for something different. Um, I would love to say hello to Andy. Hello, Andy. Um, he recently started painting thanks to these tutorials. So grateful. Well, you're welcome. Let me know if you're painting with someone, um, who's like either there with you or who's not there and you're like Skyping or do, do people even Skype anymore? It's like all about the Zoom and like messenger like Facebook message chat video people. I do that all the time. I still say Skype because that's like what I grew up doing because that was like the video chat of when I was little, but <laughs> not little, but like just younger. But I don't hear that very often anymore. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take a quick second to go grab a sponge um because i we are going to be using a sponge for some of like the furry texture um there are two ways that you can do the kind of fuzzy texture if you want it to be like a short fuzz you'll do a uh, you'll do a sponge kind of effect like a dabbing motion if you want it to be more of like that long fur you could do more of a kind of like an actual fur which you would use a Let's see, you would use a fan brush for. So depending on what kind of a bear you want and what kind of fur you wanna have, I will say that doing the fur type does take a little bit longer and you kinda have to work your way like up, um, but that's also an option. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go grab a sponge. So if you don't have a sponge, um, go get one. Okay, I'll be right back. Hello, hello, I am back. I just grabbed a sponge. I thought I had another sponge in here. So I have two different sponges. So for those of you who don't know, I used to do face painting, um, which we used sponges all the time. Um, and the sponge that I used to use was, it was like a lot more like porous. Um, this is the one that comes in the kit that I recommend. So um, for those of you who I don't know you could see this okay so this is this is the kit it's like I don't know it fluctuates between like 16 and 20 dollars if you're in the US um, if you're in the if you're in Canada it was like it's really expensive so don't buy that one just get one that's like it um, but I'm just using the one that came in the kit I had I had a different one anyways what are we saying before is I have another one that's a lot more porous because we used to use it for um, sponging faces. Well, I mean, I, I didn't use a specific one, but I would cut them into fours and use those. Um, and that one holds a lot more paint and water. 
So depending on what you're using it for, it could be nice. Um, but I actually, for some things, I actually prefer this one because I don't know if you can see. Let me see. If you can see. You can't really, I mean, there's not a lot of holes in it. Like the holes are like very even and the same. So I'm using, this is called an art sponge. Um, it's just a round art sponge. Um, it's not really... A specific name for it per se um, but the important part of it is that I will be using um, the round part of this I'll be like scrunching like this so it's very round and I can get more there's no like hard edges on it um, which is why I'm not using like a sponge dauber because that has like it's a very round shape and I don't want to get those corners I want it to all like kind of blend to each other so that is what I will be using. Um, you've never painted with a sponge before. Well, do you have a sponge so that you can use it? Because I will be using one. I don't know where. I want to show you my other sponge. I just don't know where it went. We recently kind of cleaned this area. Um, we're in the process of like switching around some furniture in our studio bedroom. <laughs> um, so, I don't know where it was. It's fine. Anyways. So yeah, you can use any art sponge that you want. I'll be using the one that came in the kit. Um, which is fine. It'll be fine for what we're doing. I think I might have used this one anyways. Not that I can look back at the speed painting and see because... It was lost forever. Um, I don't have a sponge yet. Don't know what to get. Do you have fairly good brushes? Because if you don't have fairly good brushes, you could just get the brush kit and it comes with a sponge and it also comes with a palette knife, which is amazing. So, um, hello, we are excited to be here. This is the first class ever first class painting ever or first like online class either way that's exciting and welcome okay so christina is eight years old and mom chloe sims awesome okay one question where can we find the supply list okay so the supply list if you're watching on youtube um it'll be in the description so you just scroll down there's like a little button a little arrow you can click and it'll drop down the the, the details of like you know this video and all of the supplies list, list will be in that um in that section um if you're on the i don't know if i posted um let's see um i don't think i posted on the actual like my page maybe i did this morning i don't remember it's been a long day I think I did post it. Um, but if you're in the event, then it'll be um, in the details, which you can click. There's either the discussion or the, um, I don't know what it's called, details. I think it's just details. So you just click that and it's right there. Um, I On the event page on Facebook, I also posted it in like the discussion. So if you scroll down a little bit, it'll have... Um, like all the suggested supplies there as well. Um, I get my brushes at Michael's. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, they have, I know that Michael's has round art sponges. Um, if you don't have any sponges, you might as well get a, I think Michael's has like a, it's like a variety pack. So it has like a coral sponge and like an art sponge and some other sponges that might be helpful. Um, essentially sponges are just for creating texture so um, they're handy to have I might I might get a pack of um, just random sponges because they are nice to have for when you want to add texture and things like that um, we bought the paint brushes and the paint set from your slide list okay yeah so just use the um, that should have come with a sponge um, I think all, I'm pretty sure all of the kits that I, um, have listed come with a palette knife because I do, I do do 
palette knife paintings quite a lot um, so I wanted to have that in there and then I also have the sponge in there so uh, I think I saw it on the website yeah yep I have it on my website too I'm excited to paint we have about 10 more minutes so if you guys have any questions at all um, get your paints out um, get your palettes out and we'll get started soon. This is always like the calm before the storm for me because it's like not a whole lot of people here, but there's like enough to like um, converse with and it's just nice. Oh, I forgot water. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some water. I knew I was gonna forget that. So if you've been with me before, I just got my water. If you've been with me before, um, you'll know that I used to teach in the kitchen, which actually some of you might not have known that because um, I have a I had a black backdrop. <laughs> so you might have not even known that I was in my kitchen. Um, I did mention it a couple times, but um, so I would just like get everything ready and then I would put the backdrop off and I like. It was really hard to forget everything because it was all like right there but now i'm like things are still in the kitchen <laughs> but it's fine um can you use your damp paper towel in place of a sponge um i've had people use a paper towel i wouldn't damp i wouldn't i wouldn't make it um wet um because you're gonna have more texture if it's not wet hello Hello everyone who's just joining us. Um, so on that note, if you are going to use a paper towel, I would do it dry. But even then, I have you have to have like barely any paint on it. I mean, even on a sponge, you ha you have barely any paint on it. So I would just maybe um, test it out on not your painting before you get to that point, so that you're not, you know, globbing on paint on uh, unintentionally. Um, Jessica says, hello, this is my first session with you. Well, welcome. Hello. Um, I've done other acrylic artists before. I've been doing with you from Greater Des Moines. Des Moines? Is it? Do you pronounce the S? Des Moines? Oh, Iowa. Um, hello. Because I'm pretty sure that's French. I don't remember what it means. But if I was not trying to speak it French, I'd be like Des Moines. But I know that it's De Des Moines. Something like that. Um, I saw that you have basic line of paint. I bought my first one. Uh, and the difference with the Artist Loft brand was unbelievable. Yeah, the basic paint is way better. Honestly, the... Yeah... So, like, Artist Loft is okay if you're just starting out, but it's gonna make things that you didn't know were difficult more difficult. Um, so, like, blending and things like that. Like, it's it's good, but it, it is cheaper. Um, I, I tend to like um, Master's Touch is what I use mostly, which I think is technically a Hobby, Lo Hobby Lobby brand. Um, but that's usually what I get. I haven't had too many problems with it. I have heard that Artist Loft isn't the best once people switch and realize, like, the difference. Um, I do use Basics brand for some of my colors. Um, but that's mostly because, um, you know, Artist, or, um, Master Such didn't have the, those colors. But, um, yeah. Um... Let's see. Um, hello.
Hello, this is my first time here. Hello. Hello, Marianne. Jessica, Michelle. Uh, couldn't you use a wedge mail up sponge? I don't know what that is. A wedge mail up? I don't know what that is. Honestly, you could probably use any sponge. I just tend to like the ones that don't, I mean, this sponge technically does have a more of a hard edge. Uh, the one that I'm used to using and the one that I was talking about before has, it's like more rounder on the, you know, f on the sides. So it's easier to get less of a, you know, a line. So if I just pushed this into the canvas, I would eventually get this line right here of the edge of the, um, of the sponge. So that's why I tend to like, you could like cut off the edge and that might help, which I'm, I don't know, I might do. Um, but I don't know what a mail up sponge is. Uh, hello from Canvas. Hello, Lisa. I said Canvas. <laughs> Kansas. I'm a painter. Uh, first class. First painting class ever? Welcome if it is. I do not have a template for the bear. So what I was talking about before is I really wanted to be able to teach you how to look at a painting and find the shapes within that painting and break it down so that you could recreate it. Um, so normally I would totally do like, um, a, uh, like a template or something like that or a traceable. Um, I've done traceables for my patrons before. I don't think there's anything wrong with using a traceable. Um, I think it's just another skill that you can have to make your paintings better, um, and not have to worry about shapes. But for this one, I kind of wanted to teach you how to look at a painting pick out the sh basic shapes of it and be able to recreate it. Monks, that's right. Um, you don't pronounce the S. Okay. I remember, so in art college, art college, not art college, in my art class in college, I was doing a, it was like a 2D design class, or whatever. And for one of the projects, we had to pick out a type of medium and then a like a everybody put in a subject or whatever and somebody put in Des Moines and then I picked out charcoal so I ended up doing now that you say that I remember that it was a monk because it was a bald guy with like drapes and stuff like that um but I just yeah it was a really fun project um my first time here in your class i love bears and roses well you've come to the right place because we are painting bears and roses today <laughs> hello hello um okay oh a makeup sponge yes yes you can use i don't know why i didn't translate that makeup sponge. Yeah, you could use a makeup sponge. Um, I would just try to either cut it so it's, so there's not really any hard edges. Um, or you could just kind of, you know, fold it with your hands while you're doing it so that it doesn't, um, you don't have those hard edges. Cause the point is to like give it texture without giving those hard edges, but it is almost time for class. I'm excited. I'm going to go ahead and get my paint. Out, and I will be going over let's see I think I did it's my thinking face <laughs> um, so hopefully you all have your um, your paints and your brushes out and a sponge if you want to use them as i was saying before if you wanted more of like the long kind of furry type of bear you could use a fan brush totally fine um but i'll be using a sponge because that's what i originally used and it's a li it is a little bit harder to um get all the shading so hopefully you all have your whoa whoa that's the wrong link um Alright, so I was just looking for, oh, there it is, ha ha ha, alright, alright,
Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to be using acrylic today. Acrylics. I have only done watercolor a few times, so I don't know that I would feel um, comfortable teaching that because, you know, I want to be able to give you knowledge, you know, how to, how to be better and all the knowledge, and I don't want to give you wrong knowledge, so um, I haven't been painting with watercolors very long, so I haven't started teaching that yet. Probably will eventually, but not, not for a while. <laughs> okay, we are just about to get started, and here we go. Hello, hello. Welcome to the beginning of class. Um, we have people from all over, and if you're just joining us, we just had, you know, our 30-minute chat. Um, so we're going to go over painting supplies and everything that we're going to be using in this class. Um, so let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm going to move some things around on my screen so I can see everybody, see everything. And perfect. Hello. Okay. Alright, so today we're going to be using um, acrylics. Most of my classes are in acrylics. Um, so we will have our white and our black. White and black, they can be titanium white, any, any black. Mine is permanent black, but it doesn't have to be that exact black. Um, I have a raw umber this is a brown if you do not have a brown that's totally fine you can make brown with your primary colors so your blue your yellow and your red um, that's totally fine you can use that and then um, for the background we're also going to be using our yellow and a little bit of red um, I have permanent red which is more of a it's a deeper red so if you're using a cadmium red I would use cadmium red deep because it's more of a true red. Cadmium red has a little bit more of an orangey tone, um, so I would try to get more towards the deep color. Um, and then, uh, as I was saying before, I have this green. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it because I don't have a lot of it, and I kind of want it to be consistent. So I will probably make my green. Um, if you have a green that you want to use, totally fine. You can use your green. Um, I will probably be making my green, which if you've never made green before, it's just your yellow and your blue together. So let me go ahead, get my blue out real quick. And I'll probably use um, my phthalo blue and my yellow, because it is a little bit of a darker color. Um, good evening, hello. So those are the paints. So just to go over that again, we're using white, black, your primary colors, which is your yellow, your blue, and your red. Um, or you don't have to use blue, you can just have your green on hand. And then obviously we also have the brown. Now again, if you don't have brown, that's fine. You can just make it. Um, and we'll be mixing together our colors before we put them on the canvas anyways. So um, moving on, we have um, our brushes. So if you don't have the same brush kit that I do, I have this one. It's, it runs about $20 on Amazon. I have it linked um, in the description or in the details of the event if you came from Facebook. Um, and for the most part, we are going to be using the large filbert brush. If you do not have a large filbert, that's totally fine. You can use a, um, a large flat brush or just whatever large brush you have for the background. Um, and then we'll probably be using a smaller filbert brush and then a couple detailed brushes um, so with any of the brushes or the colors that I'm using you're creating your own painting you're creating your own um, your own painting and your own work of art so they do not have to be the same colors as me they do not have to be the same exact brushes that I have um, I'll usually say whether or not you know oh you can use this brush or you could use it this brush if you don't have it um, other than that, um, you know, you can, you can try to use the same brushes if I, you know, that I have, if you would like to, 
Otherwise, you can use different brushes if you need to. Okay, that's totally fine. Um, and then kind of for a random thing, we are going to be using a sponge today. So I just have this um, art sponge that came in that same kit. It also comes with a palette knife that we're not using today. We will be using in a couple weeks though. Um, oh, I forgot to show you guys. Okay, so now that everyone's kind of here. So in two weeks, we're going to be using, um, we're going to be painting a I call it Unicorn Bliss because honestly I didn't really know. It looked very peaceful. I didn't really know what else to call it. But it was a a sunset sort of moon, you know, silhouette painting of a unicorn. So we're going to be painting that. But then last night I painted this. Here. Look how cute. You guys are getting a sneak peek. I haven't shared this with anyone on Facebook or anything like that. I had like a little sneak peek of like, oh, what is this going to be? Um, but this is what we're going to be painting. So we actually use a palette knife for this one. So I'm really excited for that one. So if you like ballerinas or you know of anyone um, who would love that class, definitely keep a look at I haven't made an event for it yet, but that'll be going out on my page. So if you haven't liked my Facebook page, um, make sure to go do that. Um, it should be in the link in the description. I have plenty of links there that take you to my Facebook as well as my Instagram. Um, and Patreon and everything like that, okay? Um, so there's that. If you don't have one of these uh, sponges, you can use a makeup sponge. Just try to cut off all like the edges. Um, or if you have like a, a different art sponge, that's totally fine. And as I was saying before, if you don't wanna use a sponge and you don't have a sponge, um, you don't have to add texture to it. Sometimes I just like, it just adds something more to it. Um, or if you wanted kind of a long furry type of bear, you could use a, um, a fan brush to kind of add little bits of fur. So that's also an option. Um, is this video going to be like it be available after? Yes, so all of my classes. I'm just gonna say this once, and then um, everyone else can answer the question <laughs> for me. Um, but all of my classes will remain on YouTube. So all my classes that are going live on YouTube or um, that have been already uploaded to YouTube, they'll stay. I don't take them down. Um, they're here forever. So make sure you share them. Whatever you can always come back to paint after. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, so, and then you want to make sure you have a palette, you have water, um, and then you have a paper towel to dab off your brushes, make sure that they are, um, not soaking wet. If you have kids or you don't want to deal with the sides of your canvas, if you have a stretched canvas, um, you can tape them off. Um, you just use, you know, painter's tape. You can tape off the sides or whatever, and that will, um, that will kind of skip that step. Um, and will also save time, but sometimes kids will forget to do the sides anyways, but if it's like, you know, a clean line, then it, you can't really tell. Um, I think that's all of the supplies. Um, as for just general announcements, um, I mean, I, I just said I have... A new painting coming out um, for you all. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you always get notifications of when I'm going live, when I'm teaching, you'll get reminders, as well as my Facebook. And then if you want more instruction, I do have a Patreon um, where you can voluntarily contribute to that and you'll get extra classes. Um, some tiers get like a postcard and things like that. It's a lot of fun and it's a very close-knit community, but I think we are ready to get started. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do, because we don't have a template, and like I was saying before, I want you to be able to look at a painting, pick out the shapes, and be able to recreate it. We are going to go ahead and pick out the shapes of this, okay? So when you're looking at this painting, you have the bear, and you have the roses, and then you have, you know, the background. Background, super simple. You can make it as complicated as you want, but for this, I really wanted it to be very simple so that we could spend all our time on the bear, okay? Um, there's not a lot going on in the background because I also wanted to leave space here at the left so that you could put be mine or I love you or a name of something if you're giving it to a friend. You could put something um, lettering over here 
Um, you could paint it, or if you're not comfortable painting it, you could get a Sharpie. <laughs> you know, why not? Um, you could get a Sharpie or even draw it in a pencil first and then paint it. Totally up to you. Or you could leave it blank. Um, but I wanted to have that as a option for that, so I did create the background pretty plain for that, okay? So let's go ahead and get some of our colors for the background. Um, now you can choose different colors for the background, but I wanted it to be able to be plain. I mean, I just explained this. I did want it to be plain and light so that the, that the colors of the roses will pop. You can pick different colors. Um, I'm sorry for the trash truck. Oh, it's not a trash truck. It's a, we live right next to a fire station and sometimes they come in and they're really loud. So I apologize if you can hear them really loud. I'm just grabbing my colors. So for the background, um, we're going to be making a kind of like a peachy tan for the top. And then actually I'm going to put my stuff over here. Boop -a -doo. Um, we're going to do like a peachy tan for the top and then more of like a, um, like a grayish brown for the bottom. They're all muted. They're both muted colors, but we do want them lighter than we have the actual bear. So the bear is going to be just pure gray, um, like gray blacks and that sort of thing. Um, so we want the, we want the background to not be gray because we do want that bear to stand out a little bit. Um, okay, so I have white, I have yellow. I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of red. We'll, we'll probably use this red later too, but it's like one of the last things, so we don't want it all to dry by the time we get to. So I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of red to my palette just so I can tint um, that top wall for the background for a little bit of peach. Okay, so I have my white, my yellow, my red, and then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of brown. Now most of this, most of the background is white. So I'm probably gonna have to add more white to my, my palette. Ooh, that's loud, I'm sorry. Hurt my ears, it's like right next to me. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and mix our colors and then we're gonna draw it out, okay? So here's my palette. You kinda can't see the actual colors. Um, I have my white, my yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. Brown tends to kinda dominate colors. Um, and then I have, I have two whites because one of these is gonna be for my lower, uh, is it a table, a floor, whatever you're sitting on. Um, and then I'm going to have this other color for the top. Okay. So I'm going to mix my colors. I'm just going to use this whole section. I know that it's a lot of yellow and a little bit of red, and I'm just going to mix that up. See where it get, see where it takes me. It might be exactly the color I need. It might not. I can adjust it from there. It's pretty close. I might want it a little bit wider whiter, not whiter. And I think I want it, yeah, I think I want it a little bit more red. And a little bit whiter. So go ahead, start mixing your colors. Hello from Indiana. Hello from New York. Hello from California. Lakeside, you're close to me. And I know who you are. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add just a little bit more white to this. And then mix in that red that I already put in there. Just to make it a little bit um, not so yellow. But I do want to stress that these colors do not have to be the same colors as mine. Um, I will help you if you're having troubles getting, you know, a certain color. I will definitely help you if you're here live and you want help with your color. 
um, I can help you as much as I can. Not being able to see exactly what your color is and being able to, you know, digest it. Um, but this is about the color. You can see it, it does have a little bit more color than my original, but that's okay. Hi from San Diego. Well, hello from San Diego. I'm in San Diego. Fancy meeting you here. What part of San Diego are you from? Or I should say, are you in? Because I'm not technically from San Diego. I'm from Northern California, but I live in San Diego. All right. Hello. Hi from Georgia. Hello. So I have that color. I'm pretty happy with that color. And so this other color, I'm going to mix just my brown and see how it comes out. It might be too cool, in which case I will mix in my, um, I'm probably going to mix in just the tiniest bit of red, but we will, we will see. Sometimes mixing brown and white tends to be really uh, kind of gray, grayish. So adding just a little bit of warmth to it might help. Hello from Florida. Yeah, I think I'm going to add, so this is my, it looks pretty gray, um, but I'm, I'm going to add just a smidge, a smidge of, uh, it's a fun word, smidge, just so it's not brown brown. Okay. I think I'm okay with those two colors. Even though they're both light, they are still different enough colors that when you put them next to each other, you're going to see the difference. And I will say that because this background is a little bit further away in the distance, this line does not have to be a perfect line. Um, when I did this originally, it was just like blended and blended all together and it's totally fine. It doesn't have to be a very straight line. So that's kind of a fun, I feel like with a horizon line, there's always a very like distinct, here's the ocean, here's the sky. And it's very like, it's very straight. <laughs> um, but with this, it's, it's in the background. It's kind of blurry. It doesn't have to be, um, super defined. Um, we have people from Quebec and Mississippi painting tomorrow. Okay, cool. Yeah, a lot of people will paint after because they like to be able to stop and pause it and that's totally fine. Yep, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so I have these two colors. Let me know when you, when, um, give me a thumbs up when you have, um, all your colors. Okay, uh, someone's asking how to make brown. If you need to make brown, um, you are going to, um, you're going to mix together, sorry, I was reading the comments, mix together your primary colors. So your red, your yellow, and your blue. Most people have, um, yellow, red, and ultramarine blue. That's totally fine. Um, I would say one of the darker blues, like phthalo blue or ultramarine blue. Um, and mix that together. Mix, just mix equal parts and you'll probably end up with a probably a chocolatey brown. If you want to make that darker, you can add a little bit of just like the tiniest bit of black and then you can start adding your white to it. Um, but you don't have to have a, a large amount of it. Um, as you see, I just had like the tiniest bit here and I added that to a lot of white. So these are the colors I have. What are you guys chatting up here about? Uh, wow, I just saw someone with the same name as me. Wish I know where she is. Uh, you don't see that name very often. Yeah, small world. <laughs> uh, what colors are we blending? So for this one, for the top, um, I blended, I could probably add a little bit more white to it, but I think I'm okay. Um, this is my mostly white with a little bit of yellow and a tad bit of red. It's kind of my peachy color and then the one on the right is my a lot of white with um, some dark brown again if you don't have dark brown 
make you can make it with your primary colors and if it's not dark enough you can um, add a little bit of black if you're making brown and it seems too yellow you'll add both of the other colors so your red and your blue if it's too blue then you'll add you know the other two colors if it's too purple you'll add the opposite which is yellow um, and when I say opposite I mean when you're looking at a color wheel and you have like the primary colors and then like the second the secondary colors in between those the opposite of yellow is purple and the opposite of blue is um, orange opposite of green is red that's what I mean by opposite so if it's looking to one color you'll just add the opposite so if it's too yellow you would add purple which is your red and your blue I hope that's not confusing so yeah these are my colors uh, so from here we're going to look at this bear pick out the big shapes first and then we'll go from there okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush and I'm going to I might have to for me because I'm teaching I might have to make my color a little bit darker so that you can all see it um, so let me know if you can see this color that I'm going to be drawing with so um, typically when I draw um, on my canvas I'll just use paint because it dries really fast it's really easy to cover up um, and yeah so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our um, where like our top and bottom meet which is just below half so you get a little bit of water on your palette with your uh, whatever color is fine. I'm using this color so that when I... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you guys hear that? We live right next to a fire station that is a training fire station. So like I'll wake up to all sorts of noises like engine noises, beeping noises, people yelling, chainsaws. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So I apologize if you're hearing obnoxious noises. Um, anyways, so... Oops. It's dripping okay so I have this and it's a little bit on the so this is pretty thick um, over here like my actual color I'm adding water to it so that it'll, it'll go on my painting fairly easy and again this doesn't have to be a perfect line it's just to give a general just a general line So that, you know, we don't paint the whole thing one color and then come back with a different color. Okay. So now we have a reference for where to put our bear. So this bear is about in the middle. Okay. Or not in the middle. The, the left side of him sitting down is about in the middle. So I can kind of just put like this line right here. I know that that's kind of where his back is. Okay. Um, and if this is not in the place that I want it later, I can just paint over it. Like, that's okay. Um, that's totally fine. So this is just the sketching stage. If you make something that's too small or too big and you want to change it, this is the stage to do that. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to look at this bear. What are the big shapes that you see? Probably the head, right? It's probably the biggest shape. So I know about you know the third way up from this section is where his head starts so it's about right here okay and I know that it's kind of turned and the top of it is about you know an inch from the from the top it doesn't go all the way up so now I have like a base of where my bear is so I can go ahead and just make that circle complete a little bit i know that the side of this doesn't come out too far from this original line that i created and again if you create a line that you're like oh that line's not really right you can always change it so 
So right now I can see that my head, not my head, <laughs> the head that I'm painting is a little bit too round and I want, most bears heads are kind of like, um, more of like an oval shape. So I know that I can come out just a little bit more out here on the left side and come out a little bit more over here on the right. bit more like that. Yeah. All right, so once you get your head in place, then you can add your ears, which, uh, you know, just general. They don't have to be in the same exact place as mine. I guarantee they probably won't. I don't think that mine are in the same exact place as the one I originally painted. I will say that the one on the left, the um, our left, the his right ear, because his um, face is a little bit turned, um, you'll you will see a little bit less of this ear. So just keep that in mind. You kind of see a little bit less of it, maybe. A little perspective. You might change the shape just a little bit. I think mine came out too far. I'm gonna fix that. See, so it just created a new line. So now I'm just gonna ignore this when I'm <laughs> when I'm painting it. Yeah, you guys can talk. Go for it. Family reunion. I will. Not read them all out loud. <laughs> Alright, so once you have your head and your ears, I apologize, you can't really see that one because there is a little bit of reflection. Honestly, it's like almost impossible to not have a reflection somewhere. Um, unless you have absolutely like gorgeous natural lighting, which we live kind of in a cave, so there's not a lot of natural lighting. And it's going to get dark, so I kind of have to have random lighting. Um, all right. So the next part of this, we're going to the shapes inside the face. So that is the muzzle. So like the nose, like the nose and then kind of like that mouth part. Okay. I think it's called a, mu a muzzle, right? Or is the muzzle what you put on them so they don't, don't talk. I need to be more edumacated guys. Edumacate me. So then I'm just going to do kind of a little circle and this circle if you've ever noticed it's kind of a little bit more of a triangle um, with the top part being a little bit higher um, and this is partly due to the angle of him kind of slightly looking up and it's also due to just you know teddy bears have that kind of shape um, but remember that his face is tilted so make sure that you keep that kind of in line with the direction of his face so his, his face isn't this way it's actually tilted this way okay <laughs> you guys are all you guys are funny And then obviously you have his little, his little nose right here, but you'll just, I'm using the same line at the top of this line. I'm just continuing this and creating a nose from it. Okay. And then we'll put in all the details later. This is just, um, I can't wait to give this to my granddaughter. Oh, I always love when people give paintings as gifts. I feel like if I did that, everybody would be annoyed with me though, because I paint so often and have so many that I would run out of friends to gift things to. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay, so the next couple big shapes are the arms and the legs, okay? 
So for this side, there's three little humps. The first one is his arm. So we're just going to create a little a little loop here here and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see more of what I'm doing. Um so wait. Okay, so we have his little arm that's here. We have his little belly that's kind of plushing out. That's and I'm kind of just keeping to this line that I already created. And then below that we have um, his leg. And his leg. Now I did make this bear a little bit bigger than the one that I had in the original and that's just honestly it's really hard to recreate something exactly how you did it before even for me even for me knowing that like I'm the one that created it so if yours looks different that's okay not even I am able to like perfectly recreate something okay Let's zoom out a little bit. Alright, so we have this kind of these three sections right here. One is the arm, one is kind of the belly, um, the phleb, and then we have um, this. Um, Swati says what to mix with. What to mix what with? What are you what are you referring to? The color that I'm using right now? I'm just using the background color. Um, because it'll it'll blend in really easily if like I mess up or whatever so like right here I had a line that I'm like oh I don't really like that and I recreate it it'll be really easy to cover that up because it's the same color so um so then we have um let's see I'm just gonna come around here and make the actual bear and not pay attention to the um not pay attention to the flowers because you know we want the we want the structure of the the bear to be right too okay let me know if any of you are falling behind or if you're keeping up fine Hello, for anyone who's just joining, we're just creating the bear right now. Being able to look at a painting and pick out the shapes and being able to recreate that. So right here, I'm just going to connect right here. And this is about where his arm would be. And this one's kind of coming down below. And everything over here is kind of jumping out. So. Um, in comparison to where his arms, where his hand kind of stops, his foot is a little bit shorter, or maybe it's just in a different direction. So I'm just going to put a little circle right here and connect that. And then I have this other one that's over here. And if it looks silly, if your construction of your bear looks silly a certain way, change it. Like change where the foot is. Like for me, I almost might, I almost kind of want to put it further back. Like so if I were to do that, I would just draw a different, you know, a big one like right here. I almost feel like that's where it would be more than where I put it first. So don't feel like you need to follow my instructions exactly um, in the placement because you might have put your arms or bigger or smaller and that might look better um, in a different way, okay? So I'm going to put this guy, this other one right here and take it in to connect it all. Okay. Um... I'm working on an 8x10, so I had to erase the bare head to make it smaller. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, and you kind of have to just adjust 
um, if you have a square canvas or if you have a different canvas, I'm using an 11 by 14. I think that's the other thing I forgot to say. I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas, um, so it's fairly big, um, but it's just, you know, you kind of change it as you go. I think, I think I'm going to make his hip come out a little bit further. I think that's what, when I look at the two of them, I'm seeing that he needs to have, he looks very straight up and down. He needs to kind of have wider hips. So I'm going to just take this out, take his leg out. Not take his leg out, but you know, move it out. And that might give it a bit more room and make it bigger. So this is kind of the adjustment phase. So this is where you get to look at it um, hello, thank you for liking. Hi everyone that's just joined. Um, so this is kind of where you get to look at it and does everything fit? You can kind of make your adjustments there. Um, and you can go from there. So at this point, we kind of know where our, um, our flowers are going to be. So we have, and they don't have to, you don't have to have four. You could have more, you could have less, you could have one, you could have a heart. You don't even have to do flowers. You could literally do a heart. You just have them holding a heart if you wanted it to. Um, but we're going to do, I'm going to do what my example is. So I have five roses total, four in the hands, one on the, on the table or whatever he's sitting on. Um, you have one here. And I'm just going to like put in blank spaces. I'm not even going to like draw them out right now. And for all my patrons who are here right now, we just did a one stroke class, like a one stroke rose class. So if you are practicing that, um, this is a great, um, this is a great painting for that. So if you wanted to do a one stroke rose instead of kind of like the simplified version that we're going to do, do it, get your practice in. Um, and for anyone who's watching, who hasn't, you know, it's going to do it later. Um, you can either look, look up classes on, you know, YouTube for One Stroke Rose, or you can go to my Patreon. Um, it's available for any class, or I'm sorry, it's available for any tier. Um, we hit, I hit 10, 10 patrons last month, um, and we did like a special class with everyone, and specifically for One Stroke Roses, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so for patrons, if you want to do that, that's totally um, a really great opportunity for that. I would probably make these flowers just a little bit bigger so that you have enough room um, for all of the petals and stuff like that. And you can make them a little bit smaller. Um, will this video be on YouTube by morning? Yes, it is available as soon as we're done. Um, so I used to go live on Facebook and then I would upload it on the following Wednesday. So it would take a couple days cause I'd have to edit and then upload. Um, but these, all of these are just live raw footage. It just goes, it just saves to my channel automatically. So as soon as we're done around, you know, hour and 20 minutes, you'll be ready to watch. Okay. And I think even now on YouTube, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can just move the little red button all the way across and you can start it from the beginning. Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure YouTube Live does that now. But I could be wrong. Okay. So that is that is the gist of this. Let me know how you guys are doing. If you're in a um if you're in a position to continue on, I think I'm just going to make my roses just a tad bit bigger. I feel like they needed to be bigger. Uh, yes, you rewind. Yes, so you can. So if you, if anyone's joining us right now and you're ready to paint right now and you want to paint, you can rewind it um, to about probably a half hour because that's when we started. Um, I have a half hour where I chat to everybody and get everybody ready for class and then um, and then I'll start class. So if you wanted to rewind it, you could do that. Just if you comment, then I won't. Um, that'll be for things that I already taught. Um, yeah, is everybody... I'm seeing some thumbs up. Um, 
If you are at a point where we can move on, let me know. I think we're at a really good spot right now. I'm not putting in this one because I'm just going to go over the whole bottom part, the bottom section, um, and then, um, sorry, this is like crooked, so it's making the line look crooked, but it's not crooked. Oh, it's not crooked, it's just because it's at an angle. My camera's at an angle, so it looks like this is crooked. It's bothering me. <laughs> uh, let me just fix this. Sure. We'll go with that. Okay. All right, lots of thumbs up. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. So we are going to um, go ahead and grab our big brush. So I am using a large filbert brush. If you have the same kit that I have, it's the largest one in there. I think it's a number 15 and go ahead and dip it in a little bit of water. You'll dab it off so it's not super wet. And you're just gonna fill in this whole area. Now, if you have time um, or you're rewashing this and you can stop and play it, you can add texture um, with your palette knife or um, other colors if you wanted to, um, like maybe white. Like we might add some white just to add you know, a little bit more dimension to it. Um, but for this part, it's really just filling it in so that there's a background and it's not pure white. Because honestly, we do want this background to be just pretty plain so that we can add everything on top of it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna do top down. I know I just did this. I'm not thinking because I was talking. But we're going to start from the top down because when we get to this part, we want it to be wet so that when we start changing our color, we can blend it really well so that it, you know, it can um, be more like a, a blended background, like, um, and it's not, we don't have to worry about getting that line perfectly straight. I'm just taking this and filling it in. And all my strokes are just going straight across. Um, just going straight across just so it has a nice even um, tone to it all. And this is the really nice part about using the same color of the background to draw is that you don't really see your lines. Um, I mean, if you wanted to see your lines, then I would use a different color, but you don't really see the lines. It covers it up really nice so that when you put in your other gray color, you can like recreate those lines really well. Um, and you don't have to worry about covering up your drawing lines. All right, so if you have a stretch canvas, don't forget to go on the top, the sides, and then the bottom when we get there. And don't worry about going over your lines because we will we will create our own lines again. Like we'll, it's just to give a general um, outline of it. If you go over it, you know, in here, that's fine. It's just our sketching lines. You might see me at some times, at some points, kind of doing this, where I kind of go back and forth really quickly. Um, that is simply to get the paint in all those little crevices. Um, sometimes the paint can be stubborn and it doesn't like to go in the canvas, um, the 
canvas like grooves. So sometimes going back and forth and then smoothing it out is really helpful. Okay. All right. Now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and while this is still wet, I purposely ended on this bottom line so I can rinse out my brush. Yes, you can also pause, um, but then you'll be behind a little bit. So if you ask questions, it'll be, it'll be a lot later when I'm getting them. Um, all right, so once you get to this part, then you can switch over to your bottom color. And you can just add that. And I'm going to add this to both sides before I start blending, okay? So I add it in a line, but I'm not like, I'm not trying to be perfect at it. I'm just adding it. So then I'm going to rinse out my brush. And then, just with a clean brush, knowing that both of these sides are uh, still wet, I'm just going to blend that. Just a little bit. The more you go over it, the more it's going to blend. So try not to go over it too much. You still want there to be like a line, but it can be blurry. I will say that my colors that I chose this time around are a little bit more different than the ones that I had originally done. Um, they are a little bit darker. So what I can do is, because I know that my bear is going to be roughly that color too, I kind of want to lighten it up. So I'm going to lighten it up as a go. I'm going to leave that because that's okay. I'm going to go in just with my, my white. I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. And this is really only if you put the color on there and you're like, oh, that's, that is pretty, that's pretty dark. So you don't have to do this. I'm just noticing that the color that I created when on the canvas put in perspective with the other colors, it is a little bit dark. And I want to have more of a contrast between this and the background. So now I'm just going to go back and forth with my white and my dark color. Again, if your color is fine, then you don't need to do this. Just go in with whatever color that you created um, and fill it in. But I kind of needed to create a whiter, whiter color. And don't forget that you do have a bottom of the canvas if you have a stretched canvas. A lot of times, even I will forget to do the bottom. I've thought about switching to like canvas panels so you don't have to worry about it. But then it, you can't like put it straight on. You can't put it straight on the... Um, the wall. Um, let's see, I accidentally covered my bear's ears. That's okay. You can just paint it back in when we do, um, when we put the rest of it in, okay? Um, yeah, you can just fix the ears. Um, don't worry about it. You can always just come back in with whatever color, with the grayish color that we're going to use. You'll just come back in with it. So don't worry about it. I got 
this side, and I did not, so let me oh. So there's definitely a little bit of a gradient, which I did not plan, but sometimes, sometimes you put something on the canvas and you're like, that's not what I wanted, or that's not how I want it. So you change it. And then I actually kind of like the gradient. As Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. Um, your rose on the table does not have a shadow, um, that I can make out. Um, yeah, I might have forgotten that. There's no biggie. We can put a shadow in there. Yeah, it kind of looks funny, huh? Because there's like a shadow underneath the bear, but not the, <laughs> not the other one. You know. I think it had been a really long day when I painted this. But I really wanted to do like a, a bear with roses. But, but we can we can put a um, a and actually we could technically do that now since it's still wet. Um, but I want to teach you a dry on dry technique, which is really fun and um, very useful. Um, so we'll wait. Normally you could just you know put a little bit in and then you can dry, but. All right, so now we get to have our black and our white. Um, I am gonna wait a little bit because I don't wanna start without everybody being here. So um, give me a thumbs up when you are at a point where we can move on to the bear. I'm just getting my black and my white out, or more white, I should say. I did have white out, but I keep, you know, using it because we're painting. Yeah, at this point, if you're re-watching this, you could add some textures. Um, if you watched, uh, if you were here for my last class where we did, like, the texture on the wall behind the flowers. Um, you could do that with maybe a little bit more subtle of colors. Um, maybe some whites, or you could mix whatever color you used here, you could mix that with a little bit of white and just put some subtle difference on it. have a couple thumbs up but there is a lot of people here so I do I do want um, to wait just a little bit more I didn't know if I did that that often <laughs> that always reminds me of Shrek and the Shrek is like, I won't annoy you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay. I have some cheap craft paint from Michaels. I also have some pro paint from Hobby Lobby. It seems like I am going through about three times the craft paint. Um, but it's about three times more money for the pro. Okay. So the craft paint is diluted so you have to it, it just it's more diluted I don't know if it's diluted with water or if it's diluted it's just make it makes it so that it's can go on anything and it's very flowy um, it's I would say that it's not necessarily made for canvases it's made for I mean acrylics in itself is made for like all sorts of surfaces um, 
or can be used for all sorts of surfaces, but craft paint specifically, um, yeah, it's more translucent. Um, it's more watered down. Um, you have to do multiple coats. Um, so I would definitely use, you'll have more, what's that, what am I trying to say? Um, using your pro or student grade um, acrylics, your heavy body acrylics, um, would work a lot more, a lot better for canvas painting. Um, craft paint is that. It's for crafts. It's for, you know, different things, not necessarily canvas painting. Um, with that in mind, you don't really have to water it down when you're doing backgrounds. I will say that some people say that it's more translucent, so then you have to do a couple coats. Um, yes, Donkey does make that sound. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing a bunch more thumbs up, so we'll go ahead and move on. So now we're going to create our, we're going to create like the medium tone. So if you look at this bear, you have your highlights, your low lights, and then like the basic color of the bear itself, which is a pretty light to medium gray. Um, it's a lot easier to go darker than it is to go lighter. So try to make it on the lighter side, um, and then we can always darken it up. So we're going to go ahead and create our color right now. I think I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to keep my big brush for right now because I do have a filbert. If you don't have a large filbert, this would be a good time to switch to the, um, this would be a good time to switch to your uh, smaller filbert brush. I really enjoy using filbert brushes because they are naturally round at the tip. Um, they work like a flat brush because they're flat, but they're oval at the top, okay? Somebody had a question. Um, the line that crosses the bear, will it be covered with the white paint? Yeah, it'll be covered. Um, this, you, this one right here. If you want to cover it with white right now, um, if it is really dark, you could do that right now just so that it's easier to cover up. Um, so for instance, like if I wanted to just put like a coat on it just so that it's not as dark and it'll be easier to cover up, you can do that. It's just about, about that. Just a little bit, um, just so it's not as dark. But honestly, like you could you would just have to paint over it. But we are adding texture, which is uh, added layers. So, you know, it's up to you. Um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my, um, my, fil my large filbert brush. If you don't have a, a large filbert brush, I would switch to a filbert brush now. Um, sorry, that was like really <laughs> stuttered almost. Um, so that you can use those curvy lines of this tip to your advantage, okay? Um, it'll be helpful for the ears. It'll be helpful for all the round. There's a lot of round edges in here and it'll just be helpful for that. Okay. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a medium gray right now. And we're going to be adding grays as we go. Um, so don't like, I'm just, I'm just get, grabbing a little bit of this. I'm not like creating a whole giant, um, like glob of it yet I don't need to do that right now because this is all going to be kind of flowing in and out of different colors um of gray so don't don't um, feel it necessary to like get a bunch of this color right now so I'm just going to start putting this on and I'm going to start by redefining this line and I'm going to work top to bottom the reason for this is you'll notice my hand is on the canvas right now. Um, and that's really helpful for being able to get those clean lines and things like that. Um, somebody's asking, uh, what size canvas board? I'm using an 11 by 14 stretch canvas. You can really use whatever you want. It's just going to be proportioned um, to your size canvas. So whereas my, my bear is probably like, I don't know, uh, like eight inches, but if you're on a 10, like 10, eight by 10 inch canvas, he's not going to be eight inches. <laughs> he's probably going to be more like six. 
So I'm going to just add this color. And I'm going to go in with just my white because I know so my my light source is coming from this top corner. So I know that this side is going to be lighter. So I'm just going to add some white to my um my just straight to the canvas. It's going to mix in with whatever color you have there. And whenever you get to a like a line, if you want to, sorry, not a line. If you get to the edge and you want to be like, oh, turn the canvas, that's fine. You can turn the canvas. Just be mindful of where you're putting your um, your arm. And I'm going to go ahead and put in this little ear. Just with that light color that I have. And now I can now I can kind of create this line better. And this doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Don't worry about it because we're going to be adding texture. Um, so if it's not perfectly like blended and everything, that's totally fine. Um, what type of paint is good for canvas and is cheap? Um, I use student grade. So I tend to use student grade because I like to be able to use and experience the same um, painting uh, acrylics that you guys will probably use. Um, the pro is on the more expensive side. So I tend to, um, I use Master's Touch Fine Art Studio, which is I'm pretty sure it's Hobby Lobby brand. Um, most of the time because it goes on sale so often. Um, but then I also use Liquitex, Liquitex Basics is another brand that I use. Um, just look for sales. Um, I would try I have had a lot of people say that the Michaels brand isn't as good as um, Master's Touch or um, or like Basics brand, um, but I would definitely get things in the tube, not in the bottle. Um, although I am, I may bite myself in the butt because I just got um, somebody, a, a company reached out to me. They're called. Um, I think it's Hippie Crafter and I'm going to be trying out their stuff. So I, I will be making a video for that, but theirs comes in two or in um, bottles, but I think it's heavy body acrylics and I think it's thicker. So I'll definitely let you know. And if I really like it, um, I'll end up linking it for you guys um, to try out. But typically the stuff in the, in the bottles are craft paint and they're not necessarily good for, um, canvas painting. It's very cheap. They're like less than a dollar per bottle, but you end up using it so much faster um, because you have to do multiple coats and everything. So um, I would use like just basics brand or um, master's touch. I really like from Hobby Lobby, but if you're not, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby, then um, liquid, liquid text is pretty good. So, and they have, they have both um, the student like the student grade and the pro grade so I'm putting in my other putting in my other little um whatchamacallit ear uh, this is the point where you can kind of change the shape a little bit if you want to. I use Liquitex and love it. Yeah, yeah, Liquitex is really great. I just know that a lot of people do use the Hobby Lobby brand, so I kind of want to be able to, you know, use the same materials as all of you. But at this point, I have a lot more people painting with me, and it's not just my students that I've been painting with for a while. So everybody's kind of using a little bit of, um, a little bit of everything. Um, so it's, it's a little less um, important at this point. So I'll probably go over this um, little chin strap that I'm painting. I'll probably go over it um, 
with my um, with my roses um, but just in case I don't I still want it to be painted okay so then I'm gonna go back in with let's see I'm gonna put a darker color over here and then we'll take my lighter color and again this doesn't have to be perfectly blended we're gonna add um, all sorts of stuff all sorts of uh, textures with our with our um, sponge it's really hard for me to like talk and paint at the same time. Um, currently on a budget. Yeah, sometimes it's hard on a budget. But as somebody said before, like sometimes doing, you know, sometimes it may seem like it's cheaper to do the, the craft paint, but then you end up using it three times as fast. And then it's like, well, I could have just gotten the better grade paint <laughs> and done more with it, you know. So, okay. So, at this point, we can always lighten up or darken up any of these parts with our sponging. So, if it's not the exact color that you want, don't worry about it. We'll be able to come back. Um, we'll be able to come back over it and fix any, like colors that aren't really working okay um, okay so now we're gonna move on um, we're essentially doing all of the bear first so I think I'm gonna start with this little part here because this is kind of under under this part under his arm a little bit. It's a little bit more in the shade. And to mix it a little bit, I'm just doing um, really small strokes just to kind of mix it a little bit. If you do a line like the one that I just did, I don't know if you can see it, um, where it's just a little bit, um, let's see, focus. Uh, if you do the one where I just did, where it's kind of, you can kind of see um, the texture a little bit, it means that you either didn't have enough paint on your brush or not enough water. So that's a good indicator that, hey, you need to put a little bit more water um, or get a little bit more paint and that will help you get those really clean lines. Yeah, I'm using an 11 by 14. I 
but you can use whatever you have at the house. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. And then we're going to add his arm back here that's going to kind of come around. We'll come back in here and add a little bit of this darker shadow. Just a little bit so you don't get confused by the shape. And then at last we have our arm. A little bit more water. Okay, somebody's saying you messed up really badly. How did you mess up? How can I help you? Allow me to help you. Let me know where you think you went wrong so I can kind of direct you in a way that might help. I think that's pretty much it for the gray other than this line. Um, my background is multicolored and looks really weird. Hmm. What colors did you use? Did you use different colors than what we did? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. Yeah, let me know what colors, because there is a way that you can um, maybe put like a, a white like shimmer around the bear to kind of make him stand out a little bit more. That's an option. Um, but yeah, let me know if there's any way I can help. That is one of the reasons why I said that even if, if you are going to do a... Um, different colors for the background to make them light so that even if you're doing different colors they would still um, they'd still be light and have the same contrast okay well if you want you can always come back um, you can you can always come back and just add texture to it um, you could 
come back with some other colors um, are, are kind of in the same family and put it in different places so that it doesn't so that it looks more intentional that's an option um, I know that this is a different um, texture or whatever but um, when I was doing when I was doing this painting um, either last night or the night before um, there's like three different like colors of browns um, all kind of mixed in here so if you kind of put it throughout the whole thing it makes it look like it was more intentional um, I mean this one was intentional but um, if you wanted to do that that's also an option um, and for those of you who don't know what I just showed you is going to be one of our live classes and not the next live class so in two weeks but in four weeks so in, in the next month that'll be our next one and I'm excited about it most of it is a palette knife class so that'll be exciting um love your instructions thank you thank you for the compliment okay let me know I know that this part may take a little bit um if you're not used to kind of adding multiple colors and you want it to look good at this stage I promise you we're not keeping it here we're gonna be adding a little bit more texture if you don't have a sponge if you have an old um, and I'll even show you this technique if you have an old brush like look at this brush look how frayed it is and it's like I keep this brush around because it is so frayed because when I I can use it for stippling okay um, I can stipple on this um kind of stippling technique which is what we're going to be using our sponge for but if i didn't have a sponge then i would use this fancy uh not fancy old brush okay um so there's all there's other options that you could do and i'll show you that technique um for those of you who don't have a sponge but may have like a bigger kind of you know older brush of some sort Give me a thumbs up when you are at a place where we can move on. Let me know if you're doing anything for Valentine's Day. I don't really know what we're doing. I know a lot of people are still in quarantine, so... I, like, actually have no idea what we're doing, or if we're doing anything. <laughs> Oh, here's a question. <laughs> uh, I recently saw this going around and I have a, oh, hold on. There's a question first. Um, I have an old lady that's kind of frayed and weather beaten. Can I use her for stippling? Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's essentially what this brush is. Um, this one's not too big, so it's fine for the size of canvas that I'm working on. Um, but if you have a really big brush and a really small canvas, I would probably hesitate with it and maybe not, maybe not use, you know, all of the brush, maybe use a corner of the brush. Um, but yeah, yep. If you have a old brush, you can use it for stippling. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I recently saw this on Facebook and it was a, well, there's two things. There was one heart that had like tacos all the way around it and looked delicious and now I want tacos, but there was that and then the other one was like sushi if you could choose between chocolate sushi or taco wait, tacos sushi or chocolate which would you choose I'm 
That is rude. <laughs> I thought you were like naming your brushes. No, you cannot use your wife for stippling. That is rude. <laughs> like actually making me chuckle. I'm also trying to now picture somebody trying to use a human to stipple something. Um, spend time with family at home, bake some cookies. Mm. Cake pops for Valentine's Day. Seven year old loves cookies. Yep. Chocolate. Tacos. Yeah. Oh, Jada Langley. I know who you are. Are you the Jada Langley that I know? I think cause I, so I, back a couple years ago, I got some cavities. Um, I think due to like pregnancies and things like that. Um, I just had some, I had some like things going on with my teeth. Um, and I had to get a crown and things like that. But I think because of that, I'm like super cautious and sensitive when it comes to like chocolate and eating sugar. So like when I think about Valentine's Day, all I think about is chocolate. And I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I want chocolate because I just, I feel like my husband's going to end up eating all of it because I'm not like, I'll eat like one piece of chocolate and I'll be like, I'm done. I'm good. I don't know if that's just because I'm just not a chocolate person anymore or if it's just because I'm consciously like afraid that it's gonna just ruin my wreck my teeth <laughs> and um so I'm like all for like just I saw the sushi one and was like mmm sushi but right now I would have to choose tacos because now I'm really hungry guys that's rude why are we talking about food is that my fault <laughs> okay give me give me a thumbs up when you're ready to move on. Because we could probably talk about tacos all day. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to throw this out there. I feel like people who, in, in California, who think they know tacos, who think they know Mexican food, who don't live in San Diego, do you actually know Mexican food? Because I thought I knew Mexican food. I lived in like Northern California and then I moved here and let me tell you, Mexican food is delicious and so much better than Taco Bell. I know Taco Bell is like chain restaurant and I don't know if they even claim to be Mexican food, but I feel like there's Taco Bell and then Mexican food. They're like different genres of food. <laughs> but like before I came here, I like, I think I thought that that was Mexican food. Little did I know, I was very wrong. I was blessed with Mexican food knowledge when I moved to San Diego. Thank you to my husband. All right, and see him some thumbs up. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. We have about 40 minutes to finish the rest of this. Um, and I want to spend at least 20 of that, um, 15 to 20 of that on the roses and the leaves. So if we can get our stippling down and the rest of the bear done in that time, that would be great. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my big brush is rinsed out. I'm pretty much done with that brush. Um, my big filbert brush. I'm going to go down to my small filbert brush. Okay, so it's this one. And again, that's really just because I really like the curves that I can get with it. The curves. Um, and I'm going to paint in the nose. Actually, I'm not going to paint in the nose. I'm going to do the stippling first. Let's do that first and then we'll go over it with the nose. Because when we're doing the stippling, it's gonna we're going to go over the nose anyways. So I'll have to redo that. So go ahead and get your... Let's see. I'll do the, I'll do the um, stippling with the sponge first. 
And then for anyone who doesn't have a sponge, I'll show you the other way, okay? Um, so go ahead and grab just your pure white. We're gonna be doing most of this with our white. And when you're doing stippling, don't use any water. It's just gonna be a dry, um, just a dry sponge. You're gonna get just the tiniest bit on here. Then you're gonna stipple it on your, um, try to have a flat surface. So maybe if you need to get a plate, you can do that. Or if you have a flat one like I do. Just so that, look at how much is on there. Not very much. Okay. And now I'm gonna barely touch this. Okay, and it's just gonna add a little bit of texture. Okay, you can't really see that. Just gonna load a little bit more. And I'm gonna add this white anywhere where I feel like there's like direct, um, like direct either light or sun. So on the, on the nose part, like on the muzzle part, I'm gonna do a little bit. And the less, the less paint that you have on your, um, your sponge, the more you can kind of, uh, the more pressure that you can use. So and every time you go back for more paint, you want to scale back on your pressure until you kind of know how it's going on the canvas and how it can affect your um your paint okay so there's not a whole lot of light spots down here i'm just gonna add it for texture okay so that's how you're gonna do it and then you're just gonna switch colors um and do a little bit um in other places i might add just a little bit more light spots over here. Sorry if it's really loud, this thing is moving. Um. And some stuff okay um, for people who don't have that and you want to use a stippling um, you'll get your brush just a little bit wet and then you'll stipple it and go up and down on it to break up all those bristles okay so now all of these bristles are broken apart okay you'll go in with whatever color um, you need So I'm going to start doing kind of the darker color. And how you load the brush is stippling. So I have this kind of darker gray and I'm just going up and down stippling. If I go side to side, it's going to clump together all of those bristles into a flat brush. And I don't want that. I want to keep those um, stipple free, you know, bristles, okay? And you can come up here and then you'll just stipple. You'll just go up and down in the same way that you would have um, done a that you would have done a um, sponge. Same type of pressure, you know, you don't want to put too much pressure right off the bat. See how it's gonna affect your um, canvas before you start putting on a lot of pressure.
and you'll just start adding those highlights and lowlights. Um, if you are using a, a sponge, you want to make sure that um, after you're done with your sponge, you do rinse it out because um, the the um, the paint that's on there will dry and then it'll be really hard to use again. So I'm using a little bit of both. I'm using white for, um, I'm using white for, or with my sponge, and I'm using um, my stipple brush for like my darks. You can use a combination of both. You can use go back and forth. I will say that with the bottom one. Um, try to make a distinction between, you know how bears have that little, like, um, you know, edge? They have, like, those little, I don't know, feet, how their feet are. You can try to make it round a little bit by putting it darker on one side. And you can go as light as you want. You can always come back in with a dry brush, which is just a, a new brush. You've got no water on it. Um, and you can come back in and add just a couple low light details that you can't do with the, um, the other two. You can't do really do with the stipple or the sponge. And it's just adding a little bit of detail. Like maybe it's, it's kind of dark over here because there's more of a, you know, shadow, or maybe there's a shadow right here. Sometimes that can also add some texture. And this is also where you can add a little bit of a shadow with that dry brush. So I have barely any paint on me right now, on my brush. And I'm just gently going at the bottom here with a dry brush, barely any paint and I'm just kind of adding a shadow. And if you wanted to, this is this is the time that you kind of add your shadow here. 
that we're gonna have eventually. We're gonna have a little rose right here. So I'm just going back and forth with a little bit of paint. Like that. And we're really only gonna see this little shadow right here. So you don't need to do much more than that. Um, hi, how can I give a tip? Okay, so tip um, for anyone asking, I haven't really mentioned it. Um, all my classes are free, but if you would like to give a tip, you can do it in one of three ways. On your right here, um, I have a Venmo, Samantha Anderson Artist. If I also have a Cash App, um, which is the dollar sign um, S A Artist for Samantha Anderson Artist, um, and then I also have a PayPal. If you are in Canada, um, that's the best way to do that, which is my um, Gmail account. So it's just Samantha Anderson Artist, just like all of my other things, but at Gmail. Um, and if you do that, it will have my maiden name on it. It'll have Burns. Um, so just don't mind that. It's me. Um, but yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, so I have my Venmo, my Cash App, and then for anyone who doesn't have that or is um, international, you can do um, my Gmail, which is SamanthaAndersonArtist at gmail.com. And then if you pick the friends and family option, there won't be any extra like fees attached with it. So um, that'll be nice. But yeah, thanks for asking. Good evening. People are still rolling in. Okay. Um, it's pretty much all of the stippling. Um, you can always come back and add more or less. Um, I'm going to add... After I add my... Um, I have a lot of black on my brush already. So I'm going to go ahead and do the nose real quick. And then I am going to add a little bit of detail of the little, like, kind of, it's kind of like stitching, but just to give the bottoms of his feet a little bit more detail. Okay, so but I'm going to, I'm going to do this real quick, just because I already have all this black on my, um, on my brush. And you can choose um, a different shape for his nose. You can make it very round. You can make it more of like a, you know, kind of like a dog nose, how it's a little bit more triangular um, and actually how bear noses actually are. Um, so you can, you can choose your own path on this. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. And sometimes you might, you know, do something and it's like, oh, I actually don't really like that. And you can change it. I think I'm going to go with a little bit more of a triangular nose. So you guys can see the difference. The one I originally did was very round. It was more of like a oval. And this one's a little bit more like a triangle. So you choose. Now that I've done mine, you can kind of see the difference. Um, you get to choose which one you want to do, okay? I think I might make mine just a little bit bigger, though. I do like the shape. I'm gonna make it a tad bit bigger. everyone just joining for anyone wondering all my classes um, are free and they stay on my YouTube so if you're watching right now and you would like to paint this later you can just come on over to my um, my channel and you can paint it whenever you want and I don't I don't take them down so okay so it is almost 540. I do want to spend the rest of the time um, on the flowers so I can be here for um, any questions you guys may have. Um, first, I'm going to put the smile and the eyes. So the eyes, because he's a little bit tilted, 
Um, the nose is going to look like it's closer um, to his right eye um, than it, he is his, his left. And I'm putting it right above his little nose muzzle thing. And start small. You can always make his eyes bigger. Start smaller. You can always go bigger. He's cute. I think if I had the choice to do it over again, I might make them a little bit further apart, but I like them. Okay, and then the smile. Okay, so for the smile, you'll get your small brush uh, just your small round brush and then what I want you to do is to get a little bit of water mix it in with that black and it will make the paint so much smoother so you can get that line really um, you can put it on the canvas a lot better um, and then also with round brushes you want to turn the brush as you're lifting it off so that it so that pulls all of those bristles together so you can get a really thin line, okay? And I kind of, I'm gonna start from the right to left because I feel more comfortable. And there we go, look how cute it is. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker in the middle. And you can do this by just um, pushing down, having a little bit more pressure. You'll notice that they look a little bit different. So the one that I just did, his mouth was a little bit further away from his nose. So if you like the more kind of, um, he's looking up a little bit more, um, just move his mouth up closer to his nose and it'll, it'll look like he's looking up just a tad bit more. Um, so that's a little bit of perspective, okay? Um, let's see. I think, I think that's kind of it on that. I am gonna add a little bit of detail. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow here just with my, I'm using the same stippling motion, but I'm using um, my, my filbert. Sorry, my brain is not working right now. Um, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of darken. Oop, that's too dark. So I'm doing the same thing of stippling because I do want to add a little bit more shape to this ear because I had just a big blotch of white. There. There's that a little bit. There we go. Um, anywhere, anywhere else where I need to put, oh, I was going to do a little bit. Okay. So you're just going to put a little bit, I'm just going to do a little, little circle right here, almost to act as like a little, um, stitching. Does that make sense? I think that helped. Um, <laughs> how do you do, Princess Samantha? I am Princess Man. I am good. How are you? <laughs> um, okay, so that's that's that. Um, you can you can tell I spent a little bit more time on this painting than I did my first one, just because there is a little bit more detail. Um, 
yeah okay so we have 15 minutes we're gonna spend a little bit more time than probably 15 minutes but the first step so we're just gonna move right along um, we're gonna get uh, your red the first step is to just cover all of these in red um, so just wherever you wanted your um, your roses I can talk wherever you wanted your roses you're just going to cover it those areas try to not use too much water when you are using um, filling these areas in because you don't want them to be too translucent you want them to cover all of those lines and all of those um, uh, just everything over here okay So here, we, all of a sudden, we have some roses here. I make these a little bit. They can kind of go over the edge a little bit. That's totally fine. And then I'm going to do one down here. Now, I think I almost want to turn this over. Um, for the one on the ground, essentially, you're going to do a little circle which is really easy. All you have to do is get whatever color you're using. Okay. You get your color and then you're just going to turn your brush and then it turns it around for you. And then I'm going to do a couple petals kind of going out. Just general area. Okay. Now while those dry, we're going to go ahead and make our green. So if you have green, great, get it out. If you do not have green, you can make yours with me. I'm just going to grab my, I have phthalo blue. You can use another blue. Um, I would say do a darker blue, like an ultramarine blue or phthalo blue, just because um, the, the majority of this green is kind of on the darker side. So I'm going to grab some of my phthalo blue. I already have yellow on here, but I might need more. I'm just going to mix this together, see where it comes. Uh, it's a little bit on the bluer side, but I think I can work with that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to fill in all these gaps that you see. And we're going to create um, some. Um, we're going to create some leaves. So the first thing I'm going to do is just fill in the gaps. I can decide what I want to do with those gaps and how I want them to be. Um, how I want them to go after. First, I'm just going to fill in the gaps. Okay. Done. Filled in the gaps. A little bit of green right there. Um, do you have a female Valentine's teddy bear with roses? Hmm. Um, if you wanted to make it a girl, you could put like a bow or a flower in the ear. Um, is what I would suggest. I would just put like a little bow here. Um, if we had another time, um, if we had an, uh, enough time, I would just do it for you and then you could decide whether or not you wanted to do it. Um, but we don't have time, but, um, if you wanted to do that, uh, you could just add and then just try to follow the same, um, f follow the same kind of template of what we did of adding, you know, the highlights and the lowlights in the same place and then you should be good. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, so that's drying. Um, okay, so for our green, I'm going to go ahead and grab, oh, by the way, if you haven't, um, I just remembered, so some of you might have forgotten, um, to rinse out your, um, your sponge. 
If you can't run to the bathroom right now and rinse it out, then just get it wet, get it pretty wet, um, and just leave it wet so that it doesn't dry, okay? And that's what I'm doing because I'm teaching a class and I can't leave. Um, okay, so I'll just wipe my hands off because they're all wet now. Um, okay, so I have this green. I'm going to use an angled brush. Which, in an article I read recently, they said it was a slanted brush. And I was like, I've always called them angled brushes. So whatever you want to call them. It's where this, part, it's not flat, it's angled. Hence, angled brush. Um, but we're going to use that for the leaves. So I'm going to grab some of this green. And again, it's always better to do a little bit darker because you can always lighten it up. Um, for this part... Um, we want it to just be thick and temp and like, you know, a darker one might just be better for this. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to, uh, so play around with your leaves. You can do this on like a plate or something else if you are feeling like you're, you know, can't do it or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a corner of this and bring it in and just do that. Now if you wanted to make it more like a jagged um, leaf that roses have, you can kind of go up and down and not make the edges of this super smooth. Like that. And you'll just do that in a couple different places. Um, I think I'm going to have one coming out from the same angle. And then I also had a couple like of these coming out from the sides. Like he's holding a bouquet. So little pieces of grass kind of just going everywhere. Um, I'm going to put a couple. I'm going to put a little leaf right here. Because I feel like it needs it. You can put them in different places. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm putting or where I'm putting it. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of white to lighten it up. First I'm going to do the ones over here first. But you will need a little bit of white to lighten up your color. Okay, I'm going to do the ones over here now. So I have one, let's see. This is the direction of the, the stem. Okay, so I have one coming that direction so I'm just going to go boop so I'll do it again from this side I'm going to press down and then come down so it's like so the more pressure you you put on there it's gonna make um, it's gonna make it bigger And you can come back and add more details. Right now we're just adding the basic shapes of this. So I'm going to add another one. I'm just going to follow my example. I kind of like those shapes that I had already. Um, roses have a couple things kind of sprouting from like um, their, like the bottom of the rose. And then these are like those extra leaves one coming down here and then the one on top is actually upside down so this is the one that I added my white to because the underside of a leaf is lighter and it's kind of whiter 
And this is the one that actually covers the stem so that you don't actually see the stem. You can keep the stem poking out if you want. That's totally fine. I just chose to cover it a little bit. All right. So we're gonna let all that dry. Um, and then after we're done with the roses, we can come back and poke a couple leaves up, you know, in there to separate the roses. For right now though, I'm going to go in with my smallest brush and grab some white and I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to put little dots in his, in his eyes or her eyes, depending on, you know, what, what you wanted it to be. And then you're gonna do a little um, reflection on his nose. Cause usually those are plastic. So they kind of just like so. And just like this line that we did here for the smile, you want the, the consistency of your paint to be a little bit more waterier. Um, yeah, if you wanted to, uh, let's see. I think I might actually even come out more with this red. Make them bigger. Um, if you wanted the stems to come out, I would have them come out right at this point. So behind this foot, but in front of this foot and have them kind of come out at an angle. You might only see a couple. adding a little bit more red because I feel like these need to come up a little bit more be a little bit bigger Yeah, so if I, if I were to add stems, um, I would add them kind of poking out through here and maybe curving down. Um, yeah. Okay, so for, I think I'm actually, I think this one looks funnier than the one that I did um, before. So I think I might add a stem. I think this, this one like isn't as big or something. So I feel like the stem could like come over here somewhere. Nah. Something like that. I don't know. All right. So at this point you can grab a round brush and we're just gonna start adding some detail to our roses. Now, the key to this is our light source. Um, and not necessarily our light source, but our light direction and where it's coming from, because that's really going to give a, um, give your roses the, um, brrr, it's late at night. It's not even late at night. It's like six o'clock. Why am I struggling with words tonight? Um, 
it's going to give it shape. There we go. Um, and definition with where your lighting is. Um, so if you want to pull up a picture of a rose that, I don't know, it might help you. Um, but we're going to add our highlights and then we're going to add our low lights. Okay. Um, Jennifer is asking, is there a template? There is not a template. So in this class, I wanted to specifically have you have, be able to look at a picture, pick out the big shapes, pick out the, um, the shapes and the, and how everything fits, um, in it and then be able to replicate that. So that's kind of what we worked on through the class. Um, okay. So in a rose, I'm just going to take pure white here, a little tiny bit of water. And I had gray in here, so I need to get actually pure white. Okay, so I have my white, a little bit of water. And I'm just going to put in where I think the tops of the rose is. So you can go more abstract with this and just kind of, you know, layer in your, you know, just go back and forth and overlap each other and call it good. You could totally do that. Um, if you are a patron of mine, you'll know the one stroke, one stroke technique. This is where you would apply that. Um, so at this point, everything's kind of prepped for that. Um, for this one, I would turn it over and do that. Um, but for this one, um, you would just work from the back front. Uh, for this technique, we don't really have to work from the back front. We might still do that. So picture where your light source is coming from and I'm just going to go in little circles so I'm going to zoom this in perfect and that's going to be like one rose now we're going to we're going to add stuff to it um so I'm going to wipe that red off go back into my white and I'm just going to imagine what this rose looks like with these different petals. And I'm just, I'm imagining just painting the tops of these petals. Some of them are going to be more closed. Some of them are more open. Now that I have like the general shape, I can go back in with my darks and kind of mix everything together and create more depth. zoom out here real quick. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do the out, outer edge one first. Um, because I felt like it was going to be easier. Okay, so that's just to give almost like an outline to it. And then I can come back in here. I just rinsed off my brush so it's a little bit wet. Um, and I can even blend any of this down if I wanted to, if I find it, you know, too harsh of a line. How do I add the YouTube background to change the video, the video photo? What do you mean? What are you talking about? You're talking about like the program that I use? I use Streamlabs. I don't know. How do you add the YouTube background? I use, I use a program called Streamlabs. So I make, I make my own template. Um, and then I have two cameras. I have my webcam 
and then I have my, um, I think it's a Canon or Sony, Sony A, um, 6000 or something like that. Yeah, I use Streamlabs and then I create my own template and then I have two cameras and then the one right, the, the picture on the right is just a picture. Um, it's a picture of what I painted when I originally painted this. Okay, so the next step is you're going to mix together a little bit of your red with some black to create like a shadow color, okay? And anywhere where you where you visually think that there should be a shadow, remember that your your um, light source is coming from the top right. You're going to add a little bit of this color. So if you have troubles figuring out where that might be, you could definitely just look up a rose and see if that would help you. But there's gonna be a lot more shadow on the left side than there is on the right because that's where, um, that's where the light's coming from. And you can always come back in with um, more highlights if you end up going too dark. So I'm just going one petal at a time, figuring out where, where my darks might be. And sometimes if you put something somewhere, like you put a shadow somewhere and you're like, oh, that's... I don't think that's where that would be. Then just keep that in mind so when you go back in with your highlights, you can um, you can go back in and fix it. And now that you have these highlights of white, you can go back in with your pure red and a little bit of water and do what's called a wash. And you can brighten those up. And if you wanted this even brighter, you could go in with even a, a more prominent white. And it would make it brighter. Alright, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more detail to our, um, our leaves. So I do need to make a little bit more green here because I ran out of my green and my yellow. Let me do that real quick. I'm just going to kind of repaint this in a little bit and this is where I can just add all sorts of details. I can add the little the little line in the middle. I can add um, all the leaf detail. 
At this point, you can go crazy and go as much detail or as little detail as you want. Totally up to you. Um, try to remember your light source and where your light's coming from, what might be in the shadow versus what's in the sun um, or whatever your light is. So for instance here, I know that the light is hitting this part of the leaf, but it might not be hitting that part of the leaf. That one, that part might be darker. So you could kind of keep it on the darker edge. Come again with maybe a darker part. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a pale green. And I just add a white to the green that I was already using. And I'm adding those lines that leaves have. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And you can honestly, I could spend so much more time on this, um, but I don't, I don't want to keep you guys here. Um, but yeah, so just keep, you can keep adding depth. Um, what I will say is if your if your painting is looking too flat, try to add darker darks. So for instance, let me just show you. So right now I, I don't have any pure black in my roses. And let me just show you what this could look like. So I'm just adding really dark darks, dark shadows. To this, and do you see how that middle one just pops? You see that? So if, you're, if your painting is looking flat, don't be afraid to add just a little bit darker, darker darks or, or lighter lights, okay? Don't be afraid of that. And because I did it to one, I kind of have to do it to all just so that it's, um, it's all even. Again, I could stay here for a lot longer and like fine tune every little thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's essentially it. Um, I have, I do have another class right now um, that is on my YouTube. Um, so make sure to go over there um, and set a reminder for next time. Um, that'll be in a few weeks. Um, I have a Facebook where I do um, all of my classes and my events. So if you um, if you haven't liked that, make sure to go over there. If you would like to um, if you would like to leave a tip, all that information is uh, not only below but it is over to the left as well, or to your right, to my left. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I have a Patreon if you want to learn more. Um, that's in the description below as well. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you had uh, an amazing time. And um, before you go, if you would like to share your painting with me, I have an artist community on Facebook. Um, um, I have an artist community on Facebook. It was just posted in the chat. So it's Facebook slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist, just like everything else. Um, and you can 
um, join there and then we'll add you to the group and you can post all your paintings that we do from here on out or if you do a past painting you can add it to a class album um, you can post it just directly to the feed but I do have a class album for it so if you're on PC um, you can go to uh, media and then click albums and it should be there and then if you're on mobile you can go to let's see you can scroll over there's like little tabs on the top of the app um, when you're on in the group page if you scroll to the left you'll see um, photos and then you'll see albums click the albums and it'll, it should be the last one that I um, uploaded so yeah um, thank you for joining um, and we'll see you in a couple weeks all right have a great night bye